Okay, good morning. So we continue the lesson of differential equations, but I don't want to teach that much new lessons today. Let us solve some examples together first. Okay, let me start with some examples. Um, consider the following differential equation. So if you don't mind, let me write DE for differential equation. Uh, so the equation is x squared minus 1 times y double prime. And then I have minus 2xy prime. And then I have plus 2y equals to 0. Determine... A, a, a particular particular solution to this equation in the form of a quadratic polynomial. Yes. So I told you that solving differential equations at this level are not at the in the scope of this lesson. It's beyond the scope of this lesson. But they can ask you different type of question, even if the differential give the, if the given differential equation is complicated. So they are telling you that there is a solution to this differential equation in which. It takes the form of a quadratic polynomial. And now they are asking you to find that. Okay, by this extra piece of information, how can I solve the problem now? I cannot say I solve because solving the differential equation again means solving all possible solutions. Here we are not going to solve this, but we are going to find one possible solution, which is called the particular solution, of this differential equation if it is guaranteed by the designer of the question that a solution is a quadratic polynomial. So what should we do? Okay. Yeah. And then put them here to fine tune the constants. So that's it. So because you are telling me that a quadratic polynomial is a solution, so I would say that let us assume that that solution takes this form. Yes, it is not obvious that there is a solution of this form for this, but it is guaranteed by the problem. So I will take it and put it in the equation. To put it in the equation, I need y, which I have. I need y prime and y double prime. So I start calculating. So y prime is what? It's 2ax plus b y double prime is what? 2a. And I plug them into this equation and equate it to 0. So if I do that, it becomes x squared minus 1 times y double prime, which is 2a. And then multiplied, I'm sorry, minus 2a, 2x, times y prime, which is 2ax plus b. And then plus 2 times y which is ax squared plus bx plus c, I want to fine-tune a, b, and c so that this is equivalent, I mean identically zero. It means that for all choices of x, I want to have this to be the zero polynomial. But if I simplify this, so I multiply this in, so this becomes 2ax squared minus 2a, and then I multiply this in, so it becomes minus 4ax squared minus 2bx. I multiply 2 in, so it becomes 2ax squared plus 2bx plus 2c equals to 0. 
But this is still not a standard quadratic polynomial. I have to simplify as much as can, I can. Uh, what happens, by the way? The quadratic term is gone. Yes, I couldn't see that is happening. Yes. Actually, so what happens? Let us understand this. Might be we can solve the general uh, solution as well. Do you see 2ax squared is go gone? Yes, 2ax squared plus 2ax squared minus 4ax squared is in totally gone. And one more is gone. So what is left is minus 2a plus 2c equals to 0. So in order this to be 0, a should be equal to I couldn't, to be honest, anticipate that I can find the general solution, but that is not the general solution. Why? Because there is only one constraint. If there is a, a quadratic polynomial that is going to be the solution to this, then I don't have any constraints on B. B can be whatever it likes, but I have one constraint on A and C. They have to be equal. So this means that what type of polynomials you are expecting? You are, your A is A, your B is B, but your C is A again. So as far as the quadratic polynomial has this form, it is a solution of that differential equation. Yes? So for any choices of A and so at this level, we can call this the general solution. Why? Because I have a solution for my differential equation containing exactly two three parameters, A and B. And when I go back to my differential equation, what is the order of my differential equation? Is two. The, the order of the highest derivative is called the order. The derivative y prime appears, y double prime also appears, but the highest derivative that appears there is the order 2. So order of my differential equation is 2. I have two free parameters in my solution. So at this level, we can call this the general solution of the differential equation because it is not only a solution, but also contains as many free parameters as the order of the differential equation. Yes? Any questions? Okay. So I'm trying to say because... Um, this type of questions you also face, yes? So in those cases, you shouldn't be worried about if the differential is compl complicated. Mainly, this is a math 4 problem that tests your knowledge about integration, primitive functions, and differentiation, rather than the topic of differential equation itself. Any questions here? OK, let, us, let me solve another problem. Let me write another problem I want to wait for you. I mean, this is a little bit, I think, algebraically complicated, but I'll give you time, enough time so that you can do it yourself. Okay, the question is this. So, show that uh, show that y equals to sine of pi multiplied by square root of x plus 1 is a particular solution or you can just say a solution to the following DE. Differential equation. The differential equation is this. It's 4 times x plus y, the second derivative of y, and then plus 2 times the first derivative of y equals to minus pi squared y. Okay. I, if I remember correctly, I solved this problem once. It is lengthy, but I will wait for you, okay? So I will wait for you so that you can do it yourself. If there is nothing mysterious there. This is a problem in math 4, essentially, yes? So you have to be good in differentiation. 
it's pi square root of x plus 1, so you need to use the chain rule and probably other rules as well to be able to confirm that. This is why I want to wait for you, give you enough time, yes? Uh, so the, the problem is simple, yes? Because, uh, I mean, calculationally it is lengthy, but the idea is simple. What I need to confirm, I need y, which I have, I need the first derivative, so I have to calculate, I need the second derivative, I have to calculate. So let us just do it patiently, and please watch my calculations. If you see I'm doing a mistake, please shout so that we can stop and fix it before being in the hell again. Okay, so what we do, a y is given to me to be sine pi square root of x plus 1. That's good. I differentiate. Differentiation is simple. So dy dx is just y prime. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So it becomes cosine pi square root of x plus 1. But by the chain rule, I have to multiply. Let me write every detail here. So I have to multiply by the derivative of this. The derivative of this gives me a pi, which I can send it out. So this becomes pi. And then I have cosine pi square root of x plus 1. But the derivative of a square root of x plus 1. Again, I need another chain rule. So it becomes 1 over 2 square root of x plus 1. Do you agree? But multiplied by the derivative of x plus 1 by the chain rule, but I uh, doesn't need to write it because the derivative of x plus 1 is just simply 1. So that's it. But let me organize it because I know that this is something messy coming in. So I would say that y prime, what should I write? If you don't mind, let me write pi over 2. It's a knowing factor there. And then let me write it as a quotient. because we have to be a little bit careful because from now on, this, this one was extremely simple to do. I mean, that is, I hope that all of you got this answer right. Yes, hopefully. But now the problem starts from here, a little bit more complicated because when I want to take the second derivative, I have to use the quotient rule and the chain rule and a combination of them, yes? So what I will do, uh, I don't bother with that factor, constant factor, so I put it there. So do you remember what was, let me write the formula first. I, if I have a quotient, the derivative of a quotient is the derivative of the numerator. Yes? Multiplied by the denominator itself minus the numerator itself multiplied by the derivative of the denominator divided by the denominator squared. Okay, so that's the formula. Yes. Yes, you can. But if you want to use the product rule, no, there is no P4. Yes, either you should interpret this as a quotient or you should interpret this as a product, not both. Yes? Yes. Okay, so now let us continue. This part we have to be careful. Pi over 2, pi over 2, I just copy and paste. The denominator is simple, it's just x plus 1. This part is also extremely simple, so let me just write the simple ones first. So it's minus cosine pi square root of x plus 1. The derivative of this one for the same reason is this. So let me write y double prime here. So the only problematic one is doing it once more. But that's also very similar to the starting point. But instead of having sine, I have cosine. The derivative of cosine becomes minus sine of that expression. But multiplied by what? The derivative of this, which gives me a factor of pi. So let me write minus pi here. And then it gives me, for the same reason, 1 over 2 square root of x plus 1. What I have written so far is the derivative of this. Why? Let us review. Cosine becomes minus sine of the same expression. 
multiplied by the derivative of the argument, which gives me a pi, so I put this pi there, and the derivative of a square root of x plus one is exactly this one, but then I have to multiply it by another square root of x plus one. So what I have written so far here is this derivative, and then it is multiplied by that. Yes? Okay, so what we can do, uh, first of all, we can immediately see that whatever this one is and that one are gone. So that's good. Uh, okay, so, so what can I do now? Uh, I have a factor of minus pi over 2. Let me write it in front of your eyes. So this becomes pi over 2. The denominator is just x plus 1. Here I have a minus two, a pi here and a 2 in the denominator here. So it becomes minus pi over 2. And that is sine pi square root of x plus 1. And then here I have a factor of one half, and then I have cosine pi square root of x plus one over square root of x plus one. Do you agree? Yes. But now let us use some tricks. Here I see that I have the second derivative is being multiplied by that expression. So I will do that, yes? So immediately I multiply, so let us, before doing that, if you don't mind, let me factor a minus half out. So if I take a, a, mi a minus one half out, what happens? It becomes my, okay, let me write once more. Uh, it becomes minus pi over four, and then in the denominator, I have x plus 1. I Remember, I factor a minus half out. So it is pi sine pi square root of x plus 1. And then it is plus cosine uh, pi square root of x plus 1 divided by square root of x plus 1. So I hope that I could convince you that what I have done is right. Any questions? So I factored a minus half out. That minus half out that I brought up will be multiplied here. It becomes minus pi over 4. This becomes positive pi. This becomes positive 1. Yes? And then I multiply everything by 4 and x plus 1 motivated by the form of my differential equation. Because in my differential equation, I need to know this combination. That combination now emerges, yes? So this means that I multiply both sides by 4 and x plus 1. So it becomes 4 x plus 1 y double prime. Yes? And on the right hand side, I will have minus pi multiplied by this what is left. Actually, the problem is finished now. I was thinking, you know, it might be like, you see, it is finished. Can you see that? Because this is exactly what I need here. If I multiply this minus pi in, what will happen? It will give me minus pi squared times that. But what is this? This is just simply y. So it gives me minus pi squared y, which is the right hand side. That's also correct. But then when I multiply this minus pi here, I can use this. So let me just go one step further. Uh, I didn't want to clean this, but anyway, we can come back to it later. OK, so let me multiply that pi in. So it becomes 4 x plus y, y double prime, I multiply minus pi in, so it becomes minus pi squared sine 
of square pi square root of x plus 1, I am multiplying this minus pi in. The next one becomes minus pi times cosine pi square root of x plus 1 over square root of x plus 1. Do you agree? Yes? But now if I go back here, look, what is this? It is y. But this is also has something to do with y prime. It's more or less exactly the same thing. Pi is also pi. I am not having that factor. So if I ask you what this expression is, what's your answer? It's just 2 y prime. Do you agree? And then we are done. Yes, because this becomes 4 x plus y dot y double prime is equal to minus pi squared times y minus 2 y prime. And now I move this to the other side. So it becomes 4 x plus 1 y double prime plus 2 y prime is equal to minus pi squared. This is one way. I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is plausible. Yes. Yeah. Any questions? So, yeah, even checking that the answer is this might be sometimes cumbersome. Okay, so let me uh, solve another problem for you here. This is a little bit unfortunate. I didn't want to erase the problem, uh, the, the previous problem. Now I want to change the flavor of the problem a little bit. Here, I want to design a differential equation whose general solution is this. Okay, this is also sometimes handy because if you have a collection of curves, it's a collection of curves, yes? Because it's a collection of parabolas. Let me see if I'm recording this. Uh, by by ch ch choosing different values for A and B, I will have parabolas. Of course, if I choose A to be zero, that's not a parabola. But if a is not zero, I will have a parable. So if I say, what, what is the set of all curves coming from here? You say that if I choose a equal to zero, then I will have a line passing through the origin with, with the slope b, which are infinitely many there as well. But I can, if I choose a not to be equal to zero, and then I have also infinitely many parabolas. Okay. Now my question is, because we know that, uh, I erased that, but you have it still on your notebooks. My question is that, can you find a differential equation whose general solution is this? In this case, we know the answer, because we started with the differential equation and came up with this. Now we want to do it the other way around. Yes? So how can we do that? So let me write this as another question. First of all, tell me, do you have any questions from the previous problem? The previous problem was not conceptual at all. It was just technical problem. So you have to be very good in differentiation. But let us now, this is a little bit conceptual problem. Yes? So my question is now, I give you a family of curves, a family of functions. Here it's a family. It's math. This is the word that mathematicians use. It's a family of functions one function for each choice of a and b. Now I have a family of functions. I want to find a differential equation whose solution, whose general solution is what you see. And of course, immediately you can guess about the order of that differential equation, what the order should be, because you see two free parameters, so you expect that you have a second order differential equation. But how can I find it? How can you reverse engineer to find that differential equation? Do you have any idea? We can, we, can, we can solve a simpler problem. For example, let me give you one uh, parameter family of curves. For example, let me write y is equal to x plus a constant a. Okay, this in, in the Swedish system, they write m, which is m value. Can you write a differential equation whose, so, whose general solution is this? Yes?
My fate is not easier, by the way. I thought that it might be easier, yes? Do you have any? I want to write a differential equation so that if you solve that and find its general solution, it becomes this. Okay, okay, let me, let me do it like this. Let me put k value times x. Okay, if there is a differential equation with that property, whose general solution is this, what should be the order of that differential equation? First, because there's one single parameter there. Okay, so, so it means that somehow y prime should be involved there. Yes, so I need y prime. So calculate y prime, it becomes what? K. Yes? Can you see what is the differential equation now? Yes? What? Yes, so it means that instead of k, you put y prime. Yes? So it becomes y equals to y prime x, and that's your differential equation. That's your differential equation. Yes? Because I want, if, if you see, if y is supposed to be this, then definitely y prime is this. And if I replace k with y prime, I get this differential equation. So that is the differential equation that if you know how to solve, the general solution will be this. Okay? It doesn't hurt if we try to solve it. Can you see how we can solve this differential equation? Now, solve the diff another problem. So we are designing a new problem, okay? So we, have, we don't talk about systematically solving weird differential equations. But every now and then, there are some differential equations that you can solve based on the idea of just primitive functions. So if you want to solve this differential equation, we had this in math four at the very last lesson. So for example, I divide everything by, so I can rewrite this equation in that form, do you agree? This differential equation can be written in this form because this times that is equal to this times that, so that's correct. But why do you think this is beneficial? So I, I hope that you are not confused. Let me repeat. I start with the one single parameter family. I ask you, can you write a differential equation whose general solution is this? And then by this trick, we found that. Now, I am asking you a different problem now. I give you this differential equation, and I ask you to find the general solution of that differential equation. I told you that these kinds of problems are not the uh, scope of this lesson. But every now and then we come up with some differential equations that we can solve, okay? This is one of those things. I want to solve this differential equation. I am guiding you. Uh, we do this. I want to confirm that if we solve that and find the general solution, I go back to this answer. But now why do you think I did this to this differential equation? Why this is helpful to rewrite this differential in this form if my goal is to solve, yes. Yeah, it is a fraction whose numerator is the derivative of its denominator. And we had this in the last lesson, Math 4, that this combination is famous. So what is that? This is the derivative of which the function of ln of y. So that is the derivative of ln of y. And this one is equal to 1 over x. Now my question is that I need a function whose derivative is 1 over x. Yes, that's also famous. Which function has its derivative 1 over x? ln of x. So this means that the question mark that I am looking for, which is ln of y, should be ln of x. Not only ln of x, this is one possibility. Other possibilities are ln of x plus any constant c. Yes? Okay. And now I want to find y. So what is y? ln of y is something. You need to find y. So what is y? ln of y is equal to 5. What is, five? What is y? e to power 5. Yes, that's it. But this is playing the role of my 5 here. 
So y is e to the power of what? ln of x plus c. But this can be written as e to the power of c multiplied by e to the power of ln of x. Yes? Okay? So e to the power of ln of x is what? x. And e to power c is just a constant. So it becomes y equals to kx. Okay? So at least it was exactly at the right level of our knowledge to write a differential equation whose solution is this. And by this method, I hope that at least I could convince you if you solve this differential equation, you get that back. Okay? But now we want to do the same thing for that uh, function. You already know the answer because if you go back to your notebooks, I have written the differential equation for you there. But now we want to do the reverse engineering, okay? So I give you this two parameter family of functions. Two parameters are A and B. I want you to tell me a differential equation whose general solution is this one. And we want to confirm that we really get that equation back. But can you tell me that the idea is more or less clear for you? I told you. Here, you know that your differential equation should be of first order. So at least you start with calculating the first derivative. Here, what you need, you have to calculate, yes, first and second, because you know that there are two, two free parameters there. So as I am cleaning the board, you can think about it, okay? By the way, uh, I started with this example. It was, so what was that differential equation, by the way? Do you remember I started from this one? So you didn't answer me. I changed the problem to kx. But let us insist to solve this one. What is the answer? Extremely simple. Just guess it. Here it doesn't work because if I take the derivative, what will happen? It becomes 1. So that's the differential equation. <laughs> Isn't it? So y prime equals to 1 is the answer. Yes? Wasn't it so simple? Yes. So I because I told you that whenever you have one free parameter, it means that the differential equation is of order 1. So you just differentiate it, and then m is gone. So if y prime equals to 1, is it a differential equation or not? Yes. And the answer of this differential equation is exactly this one, because I am asking you for all possible functions whose derivative is equal to 1. Of course, x is one of them, but x plus any constant is the general solution. But the reason I erased that, because it didn't actually serve my purpose at that time, yes? You need to get rid of all pr parameters. But this was so simple, when I differentiate, the parameter is already gone. Yes? So this is why I changed my example. Uh, think about the idea, you see. You want to write something which is related to y, y prime, y double prime, without a and b being there. Exactly as I did in the previous problem. Do you remember what I did? I calculated y prime, it became k, and then I go back to my original differential equation and I replace k with y prime. In that way, I got rid of k. But here, there are more things to get rid of. One is a, the other one is b. And you already know that y double prime should be also involved. Yes? Any ideas now? Just give me the method. I will do the details. Yes. Okay, so I just would try to differentiate the L into a different group there. Well, sorry, I just I just want to get rid of each possible every one. I'm just looking for the general equation. Yes, yes. This is given. I want to write a differential equation whose general solution is what you see. So yeah, that's the, exactly what we have to do. We calculate y prime from here. So it becomes 2ax plus b. But that is not enough. We know that in that di differential equation, I should also have y double prime. So it becomes 2a. That's it. Now the problem is what to do. Get rid of a and b. From here, I can immediately write a is y, pri y double prime divided by 2. 
And I also want to get rid of B. So I put this back here. So y prime becomes 2a times x. But 2a is y double prime. So it becomes y double prime x. And then I have B. Yes? And then I calculate B. I mean, not calculate, determine B in terms of y prime, y double prime, and x. So it becomes y prime minus y double prime x. Yes, this is B. Now what to do? Put A and B back into this equation. Then I get something which is involved with x, y, y prime, and y double prime. Yes, that's it. So this becomes y. And y becomes equal to, instead of A, I put y double prime divided by 2 times x squared. And then instead of b, I put that expression is y prime minus y double prime x, but multiplied by x plus a, which is y double prime divided by 2. This is your differential equation, and it's of second order. But because we want to confirm more or less, we go back to the same differential equation, let us simplify it as much as we can. So I multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the fraction 2 here. This becomes 2y. This becomes y double prime x squared. I multiply this in. Remember, I have a factor of 2 involved. So it becomes 2y prime x minus 2y double prime x x, which is x squared. And then I will have plus y double prime. So I multiply and then I multiply it by 2. And let me rearrange that. So what can I do? This one and that one are similar y double prime x squared minus 2y double prime x squared becomes minus y double prime x squared. I move it to the other side. It becomes positive y double prime x squared. I multiply this, I, sorry, I move that one as well, so it becomes minus y double prime. And then I move this one to the other side, but I change the order, so it becomes minus 2xy prime. And I have 2y there equals to zero. And then you see that between these two, I can factor y double prime out. So it becomes x squared minus 1 y double prime minus 2xy prime plus 2y equals to 0. And if you go back to your notes, probably you will see that this is exactly the equation we had at that time, yes? So in that problem, I gave you this, and I told you that there will be a quadratic solution to this find it. We found that. But now we did the reverse engineer, but because we already knew that this is the answer, so we can at least confirm that our calculations are correct. Okay, let us give you one more example and then leave this. So this is one problem I want you to know. A general solution is given. You have to find the differential equation whose solution is that. Okay, so let me do the same thing here. Okay, it's, it, it's not beautiful, but you need to understand how it goes, okay? So don't care about beauty here in this case. So I give you a function y equals to a e to power bx. And I want you to do the same thing. So it is a two-parameter family of functions. If I choose a, if I choose b, then I have a, fam a function. I want you to design to find a differential equation whose general solution is this family of curves. Yes, kind of. I mean, this becomes a little bit ugly differential equation, but don't worry, because your goal is to just find the relation between... So let me tell you this way. If, if you want to write a differential equation whose solution is this, you shouldn't have A and B involved. So it means a relation between X, Y, Y prime, and Y double prime. That's it. Because this is a two-parameter family of curves. It means that the differential equation representing this should be of second order. So when I say a differential equation, it means find the relation between x, y, y prime, y double prime. It doesn't mean that all of them should be there, but y double prime should be there. That's definitely true. Okay? And that's the only obligation. So y double prime should be there. So I don't know. So what do you do? So you know that y double prime should be there. So what we do, we start differentiation. So I would calculate y prime. So what's a y prime? B goes down, and the function repeats itself. 
And then y double prime is what? B goes down and the function repeats itself. And now you know the target. The target is to get rid of A and B, but keeping all of them or some of them. But Y double prime is a necessity. So what do you do? It's extremely simple. If you know the target, what is the goal? The goal, let me keep Y double prime. I go back and set up a system. In this system, A and B are my unknowns. And then I want to find them in terms of everything else. And when I have A and B and I put them back there and then I have my equation. So how, how can I solve this system? Consider this a system in which A and B are the only unknowns. Whatever you see there is something known. Why do you choose Y and Y prime as a system? It doesn't matter. We can choose two of, two of them and put it back the other way. Yes. Yes, that's exactly the reason. We have two unknowns, we use two of them, solve for A and B, and put them in the next one. Yeah, I would say that they are easy. So, but how should I solve the system? It's not a standard system, but in any system, the first strategy to tackle the system is method of elimination. Somehow, we need to get rid of one of the variables. So, which way is suitable here? No, much simpler than that. I mean, you have to be... You have to adapt yourself to the environment, yes? I would divide. Because when I divide, everything is gone. One letter is left. Isn't it the case? So, for example, I divide y prime by y. Then what happens? I have a, b, e to the power of b, x. And then I have a, e to the power of b, x. And this one and that one are gone. And I got my b. Wasn't it the case I want b? Yes. So I got it. That's B. So B is a Y prime over Y. At least B is found. But now, what should I do? When B is found, I need to find A. But which one you prefer to find? Uh, which one you prefer to find A? The first one. Yes. So uh, Y is Y. A is A. E to the power of B. B is that guy. Yes or no? And then I want my A. So A becomes this one divided by that one. Which I can bring it up and write Y. It doesn't matter, of course, but let us write it like this. This is my A. Okay, I have my A, I have my B, I put it in the last equation. So Y double prime becomes what? A, which is this expression. multiplied by b squared is y prime squared over y e to the power of bx e to the power of y prime over yx by the way the equation is not ugly i mean i didn't see that because this one and that one whatever it is they are cancelled so we get a very beautiful equation y double prime is equal to y prime squared Ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you. And there is a Y there. And if you want to make it more beautiful, might be you can write it as this. Yes. So that's the differential equation. So, you see, it was not hard. I don't know why you couldn't solve it. The calculation becomes a little bit messy, but at the end of the day, it works. Any questions here? Understandable? Let me double check the last calculation. So you see, this is my Y, this is my A, and this is my B. I go back to the last equation. I write Y double prime. A is this guy. That's correct. Multiplied by B squared. B squared is Y prime squared Y squared. But times E to the power of BX, B is this guy. And this one and that one are canceled. One Y and one Y are canceled. That's my differential equation. So why, why? You see, there are no x involved in this problem. I told you that. It is not a necessity to have all of them. But y double prime should be there because it, is, it's, it contains two free parameters.
Okay, so that's one type of questions that it's good to know that if the solution is given, you want to reverse engineer that and find a differential equation. Okay, so now another type of problems. These are simple ones. Let us do that. So example. Uh, let A and B be real numbers. Is x of t equals to a e to power minus t sine t plus b e to power minus t cosine t? <laughs> the general solution to the following DE. The following DE is this DE. So plus 2DX dt plus uh, 2x equals to 0. I remember I wrote this on the board. We didn't solve it, but I reformulated a little bit so that's more suitable. So let a and b be real numbers, or better, real numbers. Is this the general solution to the following de? Motivate your answer. Your answer. Use this, use this to solve the following initial value problem. I would abbreviate it with IVP. The following initial value problem. An initial value problem is not just only a differential equation, but also initial conditions. And then usually they write it as a system. So you write D t plus 2 dx dt plus 2 x equals to 0 and then I give you two extra conditions x of 0 is 1 and x prime of 0 is 1 again so you see this becomes an initial value problem an initial value problem is indeed a system one part of the system is your differential equation another part or parts of the system or uh, initial conditions and of course you expect two initial conditions because that is second degree second order degrees wrong second order differential equation so that's why I have to provide you with two pieces of information to be able to fine-tune the parameters in the general solution so this is a typical problem I want you to know about that okay yeah this is also lengthy because you have to use the product rule several times. But it is not something hard. Okay, so let us do it together. Okay. So the first thing is that I want to confirm, if possible, that this provided solution with free parameters A and B is the general solution. So what I have to do. I have to calculate, I need to know x, which I have. By the way, don't get confused. Do you understand that? Here, x is playing the role of the function. t is playing of the role of the variable. Let us say it's a physics problem. t is time, x is rotation, or whatever it is. Okay? But x is playing the role of y, t is playing the role of x. Yes? Okay. So now if I want to solve that problem, I need x, which I have. I need the first derivative, I have to calculate. I need the second derivative, I have to calculate. So it motivates me to start from here. x is equal to uh, a e to power minus t sine t plus b e to power minus t cosine t. And I calculate the first derivative. But the first derivative is a product rule here and a product rule there. 
Or if you want, if you'd like, I don't know, I don't think it's simpler. You can factor it out and then use one product group. I don't say that this is simpler, but let us just do it, okay? So, but I will do it uh, quickly. So, the derivative of this one multiplied by that, it becomes minus e to the power minus p times the, the second one itself, plus this one multiplied by the derivative of that one. Yes? And I will do the same thing here. Derivative of the first one, which is minus p e to the power minus p multiplied by the second one, this derivative of cosine is also minus sine, so it becomes minus p again, e to the power of minus p sine p. It doesn't seem that I can simplify that much. No, so let me take another derivative. So you have to be careful, then you have four product groups. Yes? So let us just do it quickly. So this becomes a e to the power minus t. Uh, sine t minus a e to power minus p cosine t the next one becomes minus a e to power minus p cosine t minus a e to power minus p sine t the next one becomes plus p e to power minus p cosine t plus p e to the power of minus p sine t and the next one becomes plus p d e to the power of minus p sine t and then finally minus p e to the power of minus p cosine t yes what yes which one the last one Yes, but I consider the minus sign here. So I did it in my head and I brought this here. I hope that I haven't done any mistakes. Can you confirm? But here there are many things can be simplified. For example, this one and that one are simplified. Is there something else? So this becomes, these two are not simplified, they are added. So it becomes minus 2 cosine t. So I consider this and that. Uh, and is there any something? Yes, here and here they can be simplified. But here and here they are added. Yes, that's it. So that is my x double prime. And that is my x prime. And that is my x. So now what I have to do, I have to put them in this equation. So the left hand side becomes equal to. Instead of this, I have my y double prime. This is y double x double prime, and then two times x prime. So whatever x prime is, I multiply it by two, so it becomes minus two a e to power minus t sine t plus two a e to power minus t cosine t minus two b e to power minus t cosine t minus two b e to power minus t sine t. I multiply the middle one by two. I also need to multiply the first one by 2 and add it here, so it becomes plus 2 a e to the power minus t sine t. I hope that after all these efforts, you are not in trouble. If I have done everything wrong, they should add to 0. Let us see if that's the case. Is there something to eliminate this one? So this one and that one are eliminated. And is there something to get uh, rid of this? Yes, the last one. Okay. Anything to get rid of that? Yes. And anything to get rid of that? Fortunately, yes. The answer is zero. That's it. Yes. 
But if you just leave it like this, it is not finished. Because I am telling you, is this the general solution? If you confirm that, it is still not finished. Why this is the general solution? You have to mention it. Because this is a second order differential equation, and in the solution there are two free parameters, therefore this is the general solution. If you don't write that, it has, just means that you just confirm this is a solution. But you have to write this down. So I just told you orally, okay? So you say that because this is a solution independent of values of capital A and capital B, and my solution has two free parameters and the order of differential equation is two, so that is the general solution. So you have to write this down, yes. In this case, yes. In these differential equations, I know about them. So in this case, yes. Can we generally say that? No, no. But the still, the general solution has the same definition. But you might have other solutions. You cannot extract them from the uh, general solution. Sometimes they are called singular solutions. I, I remember I promised you to bring one of those equations. I forgot, but I will bring them next time. So it means that if I solve this general solution here, in this differential equation, I know, because these are assist linear systems, linear equations. If you have a linear equation, if you find them with two free parameters, this cover all solutions. But there are differential equations of, for example, I don't remember, second order. You can find a two-parameter family for them, but you can show that there are other solutions that cannot be extracted from the general solution. And if I, I think there is no solution. No. And that is... Because you want to uh, put me in the corner, but I don't remember exactly. But I don't think we cannot have two general solutions. It's just the point of when we find the general solution, we don't actually prove that there is a unique general solution. Because like, sensibly, we would have to show that this is unique to solve the problem. Yes, yes, I agree with you. I think that's the case, but I will look it up and check it out, yes. But I want you to know that when I say the general solution, at least remember this, it doesn't mean it covers all solutions. Because the f adjective general somehow conveys this idea that it covers everything. Okay, but I just want you to know that in some differential equations, when you find the general solution, there is still might be solutions that cannot be covered with the general solution. No, I will call it the general solution, at least for this one I'm completely sure. But he doesn't prove that. No, no. Okay. Yeah, but I understand what you mean, because when you say the general solution, it should be unique, otherwise I cannot use the uh, article the, yes. Okay, so, but at this level, don't worry about that. The general solution is unique, okay? Uh, yes. Because you know that uh, the general solution, particular solutions, I know that in differential equations you talk about initial value problems. Initial value problems, solutions to initial value problems are unique. I know the theorems. Okay? So it means that if you have a differential equation subject to two initial conditions, if the, general, if the differential equation has a particular form, then we can prove that the solution to all initial problems are unique. Okay, so it means that you cannot come up with another solution that not only satisfies the differential equations, but also initial conditions, yes? But the notion of the, the general solution in somehow uh, might not be very uh, plausible because I don't know if I can manipulate the form of the function and write it slightly differently. Yes, so that I, I can go back to the same question. For example, in the notion of primitive function, it does not happen. It's a theorem that if you find a primitive function, all other primitive functions cannot differ very much with the original one. They can differ at most by a constant. But I don't know a similar theorem for the general solution. That if you find another general solution, how different is that with the one you found right now? 
No, I don't know exactly. But I will check it out. I will try to think a little bit more about it. Anyway, any questions here? So the first part of the problem is finished. Now, what should I do for the second part? The second part is easy because the general solution, I have it. Now I want to fine tune A and B so that it fits with initial conditions as well. Okay, so what should I do? I will write uh, I will write x of t is equal to a e to power minus t sine t plus b e to the power of minus t cosine t. But now I want to have x of 0 to be 1. What does it mean? It means that when I go to my function, replace t with 0, the output should be 1. When I replace t with 0, sine of 0 is 0, so that is gone. But e to power 0 cosine 0 is 1, so it becomes b, b is equal to 1. Yes? I go there, I replace t, every t with 0. But this is completely gone because sine of z is 0. But e to power minus 0 cosine 0 is 1, so it becomes b. So the output is b on the one hand, on the other hand it should be 1, so b should be 1. But then I, I'm lazy to do it again because I have it on the board, x prime is here. Uh, x prime of 0 is also supposed to be 1. So it means that if I go to that long derivative and replace every t with 0, the output should be 1 again. Let us do it in our head. If I put t 0, this is gone. This becomes a. Remember it in your head. Uh, this also becomes 0. This becomes minus b. Do you agree? Because if I replace b with 0, this becomes 1. a, this becomes 1 minus b. So this means that a minus b is 1. Yes. And then because I already calculated b, so a becomes 1 more than b, which is 2. And then the answer to the initial value problem is a unique function. The function is x of t is a2, so it is 2 e to power minus t sine t. b is 1, so it becomes e to power minus t cosine t. And now if you want, you can factor it to e to the power of, it's not necessary of course, but let us make it more beautiful. So it becomes sine t plus cosine t. So this is a unique, the unique solution to an in this initial value problem. So this is a typical problem that I expected to know in, at this level. A function, a differential equation is given, a, a family of curves is also given, you're supposed to confirm that that's the solution, and then using that, probably you need to solve an initial value problem. So that's a very standard problem in this course. Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you. We stop here. <laughs>